Coach, why don't you just kind of give us an opening statement, state of the program, how fall camp went, and then we'll uh, take some questions. Uh, fall camp went excellent. Um, kids have been a lot of fun to be around, have worked very hard uh, on both sides of the ball and special teams, physically and mentally. Probably mentally has been the biggest difference in how much they're willing to expend energy mentally to learn what they're doing and how much they want to know about the game of football and how how their position interacts with other positions and how how they can fit in part of the team. So it's been great. We've we've uh, the only negative we've been hit with a bunch of injuries. So we got a bunch of guys right now that we'd like to play against Iowa. That I think we're going to get some of them back. But there's a handful of guys. The good news is most of them are not long term. So we will be getting them back. Um, but I I think. Part of it could be a negative part of it. We should be get stronger as the year moves forward because we're going to have some we're going to have some good players returning here in the next two to four weeks. So, uh, but other than that, it was a great camp and great off season, and uh, we are very excited to get going. I've had a blast coaching these kids and, and being around these kids and these coaches, and, and we are definitely heading, heading. I think you'll notice a big difference, even against Iowa, which I know we're prohibitive underdog. I just think you'll notice a difference in how we play. I think visually it'll be different. I think everybody that's watched us, even in fall camp, compared to even spring or even UMass, it's a different visual to watch our teams watch our team compete right now. All right, uh, members of the media, if you have a question, um, we'll just uh, make sure we pass the mic around just so that people at home can hear the questions as well. So, first question. Uh, yeah, Coach. Um, so I was, you know, looking through the notes, and you know, clearly you guys are returning a bulk of the team of last year, with 17 starters coming back, and a lot of it on the offensive side of the ball. You know, especially with all your top wideouts coming back, including uh, Rokeem Williams. Um, uh, so, what kind of progression development do you anticipate out of like returning 17 starters? Well, obviously, you mentioned the offensive side of the ball um, early in the year to mid year. It was it was almost non-functioning on offense at times in games a year ago. The offense didn't even give us a chance to compete to win games. Obviously, towards the end of the year, last year, we started to make some small strides uh, and, and looked a little bit better. But we're, we're looking for much, much bigger strides this fall. We're looking for an offense that uh, has the ability to score points, has the ability to run the ball more effectively than we've been able to run in the past, has the ability to throw the ball and possess the ball and also throw the ball down the field. Uh, and then has the ability to manage the game, which is kind of the starting point for our offense. A year ago, we couldn't manage the game very well. We didn't give our team much opportunity for success, whether it was a bunch of three and outs or a bunch of turnovers. And uh, so that'll that'll be the first and biggest challenge, obviously, against Iowa is a big, physical, strong defense that that is very difficult to move the ball on. Can we can we do enough? Can we carve out enough existence on offense? Can we move the ball enough to to help our defense and, and protect? protect the game from an overall management standpoint. Defensively, we, we have a good nucleus return. Obviously, we lost some key players on defense, uh, but we still got a good nucleus and a lot of guys that played. So we're looking to pick up kind of where we left off. We, by the end of the year, we were pretty strong rush defense, and we're starting to get better at our pass defense, our pass rush, and our coverage. So we're looking to try to take the next step forward. We're much smarter over there. Uh, we have a lot of kids that started back, but we also got a lot of key backups that are now going to be starting that understand our defense uh, and, and really feel good about where to go, when to go, and, and very confident and more more assertive in their decision making when they read their keys. So we're looking for the defense to make a, another step forward. We're looking for the offense to make a major step forward this year. So. Um, how much progress has Billy made from his freshman year to to now, I guess? Yeah, just, I mean, it's it's hard to, I mean, last year we put him out there. He wasn't ready for college defenses yet. Um, he was a true freshman. We kind of said we tried to, you know, try to go with the more experienced guy that we knew knew more and, and kind of went through that process. And when we didn't, when we didn't get the, the results we were looking for and the efficiency we were looking for at that position, we figured if we're not going to be very efficient, we might as well go with the younger kids, both Billy and Gus, get them experience, even though we knew there was going to be some major growing pains. So that certainly helped them and was eye-opening for both of those kids as far as what college defense is, how fast they are, and then all the different looks that they can throw at you compared to high school. Um, off season was great. He made some good strides this spring. He's made some even better strides this fall camp. He really now understands 
um, what it takes to be a quarterback and really at a high level in, in an offense that's uh, more of a pro style offense where the quarterback has to make decisions um, as opposed to some of the spread offenses where they don't have to make as many decisions or or maybe not as many big picture decisions. They still have to make decisions all the time. So he's he's come a long way. He's still obviously, you know, he's a couple weeks into his second year on a college campus. His potential is huge, as we know. He's throwing the ball way more accurately. A lot of that has to do with just he knows where he's throwing it. Um, at times, he was accurate a year ago. At times, he wasn't very accurate. But a lot of times, he wasn't accurate because he was way indecisive of what was going on and what he was seeing. So he really wasn't wasn't throwing the ball with a lot of confidence on certain routes just because he was unsure. So as he continues to gain that experience, and you can tell when he's confident in, in fall camp, the ball is getting from point A to point B in a hurry, and it's been very accurate, and we've completed a lot of balls. So um, still learning the game, but he's battling his tail off every day to get smarter and, and understand more about what defense is, understand more about what we're trying to do. And his, his you know, we, we put him out there last year, so you had no idea run game, what he was doing. You know, he had very little to do idea protection wise. Yeah, he understood routes and coverages, but there, there's a lot more to being a quarterback than just routes and coverages unless you're going to seven on seven tournaments. So we're very pleased with his progress. Obviously got a great opportunity in the opener against a very, very physical, difficult defense to move the ball against just to see how far he's come mentally um, because the physical tools we know are there uh, and he's, he's probably lost 15 pounds and added a ton of muscle on his body. So his physical tools are only getting better. Um, so just keep progressing him mentally to become the quarterback we know he can become. Yeah, Coach. Um, so uh, talking about uh, how uh, Billy has to go up and play against a very physical defense, especially team coming off a Big Ten title game of birth as Iowa, you know, a very good Big Ten power. So what are the benefits of playing a Big Ten team like Iowa? Like, what are some of those benefits for your team, a young team? Especially? Yeah, obviously for us, one, just the excitement of going to play in that venue. It's a hostile. I've yeah. never been to Iowa. I know Kinnick a lot of stadiums a nice stadium. I know I know a lot of people that played there. I know a ton of people that coached there. I've heard tons of stories. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but for our kids, the opportunity to go play in a Big Ten venue in front of a lot of people, pink locker room, you know, everybody, the story, pink locker room. Like, to me, I can't wait to see it. I've heard, I mean, since a little kid, I knew about the pink locker room. I can't wait to go be a part of that history. If you're into college football, which I've been into college for my whole life, like, to me, it's going to be cool. I don't care what it looks like or how small or dingy. I've been in small, dingy away locker rooms before. But that's just, I mean, it's a, it's a, everybody knows about it. Like, it's, it's pretty cool to say now I've actually been, yeah, I coached or played a game at Iowa in that locker room. And then obviously the long-term success of Iowa and how physical they are, we're trying to become a physical football team uh, in our own right. And again, I don't know that we're as physical as Iowa by a long stretch, but it's a good barometer for us as we put our hands on their guys to feel what physical football at the highest level feels like, because obviously they're one of the more physical teams in the country. Um, and then just to see how our kids respond to the, to the excitement and the nervousness and, and you're going to, in a hostile environment against great players and you're up against it and how are you going to respond? Are you going to respond by come out swinging and fighting? And yeah, we expect that. And then how long is it going to last? Are you going to be one that two or three plays in decide, I don't know if this is for me, or are you going to be one that two or three plays in decides, all right, this is going to be fun for the next 60 minutes. And hey, I might get knocked around a little bit myself today, but that's all part of playing college football. But I'm going to see if I can knock somebody in Iowa around a little bit too. So I just want to see how kids individually respond. You know, like I said, we, we couldn't get Iowa to come scrimmage us for an hour. It'd be a heck of a deal, like spring or fall camp, like, hey, get a Big Ten team to come scrimmage you. All right, well, they're going to pay us a lot of money to get us to scrimmage them, you know what I mean? So for me, that's the way we're going to approach it. Every single play is an opportunity to go up against Iowa and compete against Iowa, whether it be offense, defense, or special team, whether it be a team matchup or an individual matchup, a receiver on a DB, a DB on a receiver, a tackle on a three technique. There's so many opportunities for hopefully 150, 160, 170 snaps for us to compete and get better and see how we stack up against a team that, you know, almost made it to the final four, you know, one drive away from being in the the final four year ago. So th there's nothing but positives unless you go there and you're scared. So we're trying to tell the kids that if you think you're scared, don't get on the bus. Like if you're not, if you're not afraid to go there and, and get into a street fight and, and maybe go take some shots in the jaw, it should be a heck of a lot of fun on Saturday. Um, you mentioned you know, 
the injuries that you have. Um, I noticed uh, Paul Moses is running second team at the one linebacker position. Is he nicked up or? Now, Paul, Paul, really, we got three starters. With, with Junior, Brad, and Paul, we got three starting inside backers. So they're not, they're not even 1A and 1B. They're both 1A. So you're going to see uh, a pretty even rotation amongst those guys, you know, and uh, we're a little beat up behind them. So we're, they're, Koenig's doing some double duty at Mike, too, which he's playing smart enough to do. So, but, but we got three guys that, obviously, Brad and Paul got a lot of experience a year ago. Um, and then Junior got a little bit, uh, obviously, as a backup to Kern, but Kern played most of the snaps. But we, we feel pretty good about uh, the linebacker core we're putting together. Anybody else got anything? You can ask as many as you like, man. Yeah, no, it's, it's OK. Um, all right, so you know, I was looking over the roster. You know, 30% of your roster is about freshmen. So it's exciting having this kind of young talent on the roster. Like, you know, I mean, with young guys, I mean, they're very raw. I mean, especially the guy like Bill, you know, you're saying he really wasn't sure how to go up against a college defense because he didn't understand the protections. He didn't understand some of the nuances. So uh, as a coach, like, so what are the things you're looking for out of this young roster that you have? Like, what are the things you want to see them do every day? Yeah, just sure they get better, play the mind yeah, the, the The one thing they've been doing, which is what the most thing was, is just how they're competing every day. If you come to our practice, the fo you know, we had a glorified walkthrough last night, and the focus was razor sharp. And I went to talk to Rokeem Williams about a, a split on a route, and I turn around, there's six receivers standing right behind me. Okay, and that's what that's what good football teams do. Like everybody wants to know everything, even if it may be something that Rokeem's going to do and you're not going to do. Well, what if Rokeem isn't available to do it on Saturday? Somebody else is going to have to know how to do that job. So the competitiveness, mental and physically, and then for them, it's sticking together. All right, our, our upperclassmen have been through a lot. Our seniors been through a lot. Our juniors been like sticking together and playing for your teammates is something that we've really been trying to cultivate here and it's taken time to get we've had mass turnover in our roster obviously the last couple of years but we finally are becoming a true blue team uh where we we not only care for one another we've always cared for one another but we're starting to believe that the guy can do the job and we're starting to hold ourselves accountable to do the job i, I we talked a lot coming off of last season about we have great team camaraderie you guys all get along but that's not necessarily being a great teammate. Being a great teammate is a guy that goes and makes a play. Like, we can pat each other on the back and, and console each other when we don't do things. But being a great teammate is spending time this off offseason and worrying about your own game and your own craft and becoming the type of player that can go impact the game and help Miami win a football game. And a lot of kids starting in December took that to heart and have been doing it every single day and say, hey, what can I do to help this team win other than be a great kid because we have great kids on the team? It's can I be a great competitor? Can I be the guy that makes a tough catch? Can I be the guy that makes a tough block or makes a tough sack? You know, and, and that's, that's what we'll be looking for. And then the other thing Saturday for me is how many guys can make plays. One thing that's been really evident in fall camp is you know, in the last few years, we've had a few playmakers on both sides of all, but when Bake called somebody's name on defense, it was usually one or two or three guys and not, not, not much more. Maybe we spread around a little more defensively. Offensively, it was usually one or two guys. And then how many guys can, can affect the game on both sides of the ball and then on ST? Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.